let's hear about uh, Cecil Rowan then. And in uh, the contents. Around 1980, I was working uh, in BT doing relocations and, and fit outs. BT were on a big push at the time to move everything out of London. Um, and we were doing a lot of work with Herman Miller. And Herman Miller had been working in, in, in the States with their major user group on the thing that finally became IFMA. Um, and uh, the stuff that Frank Becker was doing at Cornell University. So I kind of heard this facilities management thing, but it was an American thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until, um, I think it was 83, when Frank Duffy launched the, uh, the facilities journal um, with the famous rallying cry, the occupier needs a voice. Yeah. Um, that that, that uh, got really excited because I worked out that that was what I was doing. <laughs> and it had a name. And it had a name. And it had a name. And, uh, and of course then, you know, that was what led to a group of us getting together and forming the AFM. So when did that start? AFM, um, again, I think the first meetings of like-minded souls was 83 and, and the formal formation was 85. But as I get older, the dates get vaguer. <laughs> um, but it was definitely around there. And I know there were 35 of us who were the founding members of the AFM. And we all signed. Founding fathers. The founding members. Were they, were they, were they <laughs> founders. Were they women? Or were they founding fathers? I think they probably were all founding fathers at the time. A little bit later along, along came people like Marilyn Stanley. And, and, and yeah, because Marilyn and Anne have been involved for a long time, haven't they? Yeah, but I think I'm pretty sure they weren't around at the beginning. Um, but what was it called before? I don't know. For hundreds of years, we've had hundreds of names, you know, because yeah. there's always been people doing the stuff that we do. Uh, for me, I was uh, I was an accommodation officer. Well, I started out in the post room and then was running the post room and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then I became the assistant accommodation officer in the, in the post office and um, and then later on building manager. Um, and it's really when, when this FM thing started, I mean, again, somewhere in the pile of papers that I lost somewhere in my life, uh, was a, a, a letter from the director of building the B British Telecom's building management division saying there is not and never will be a place for facilities management in BT. Absolutely, uh, quite right. Yes. On the basis that it was this strange American invention and we knew what we were doing when it came to managing buildings. Newfangled. Absolutely. Newfangled. But of course, it's just a name for the stuff that we'd all been doing for, for mm. the first good 10 years. Facilities management was all about the design of the workplace and very little was ever spoken about in terms of the management of the services. But a lot of that was still in-house apart from specialists outside, was uh, it then? Well, yes, starting yeah. to, we were starting to outsource. We were starting to outsource um, mm. uh, from, from the late 70s on. But the, you know, all the thought leadership, and it's interesting, we seem to come round cycle again. Everyone's talking about the workplace again at the moment. Yeah. Um, and workplace design and agile working and, and, and all, 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 all that good stuff which uh, I think for 20 years in the middle, FM was all about service provision and outsourcing. When I decided that probably pushing a barrel around with delivering mail wasn't going to be my long-term career, um, I, 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 I got myself a clerical job in the, in the payroll office. And I thought that would be great because, you know, now I'm in a proper, proper office job. It was the worst job in the world, shifting bits of paper from one side to the other. And of course, this was pre-computers. So we're calculating everything with, with, with manual, mechanical calculators yeah. without a pull a handle. Um, and I just longed to be back in, in, in that job where you're going around the building and you're dealing with people and you're talking with people and you're working with people. Because I thought working in personnel would be about working with people, and it absolutely wasn't. Working in what was then accommodation was about working with people. And that is, uh, and, you know, that, is a, that is the thing that's at the core of FM. That's why we have the facilities. You know, the building is only there to keep the people dry while they do what the core business of the organisation is. Um, and FM is about helping people to do that better. You know, there's one of the big changes over the last 40 years. You know, it, it was pretty much catering, cleaning, maintenance, security, reception, mailroom for a long time. You know, now that list just goes on and on and on and on and on with, with so many different things. Because once you get the idea that the, the, the skill of a professional facility manager is the, integrate, the understanding of organisational needs and the development of solutions by integrating multiple, multiple disciplines, then you can integrate anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
and then what else do you need to pull into that to yeah. actually make the whole pattern work? I mean, I'd, I'm um, sort of a violinist, and there's always been that feeling for me that. Yeah, you're the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that whole idea that you need all the instruments in the orchestra. And um, it's not always an analogy that works well for facilities people, because if they're not musicians, then they just don't know what you're talking about. But the idea is that, you know, you need all the instruments to get the piece together. And that some people have never sort of understood that about their organisation, and other people just think, yeah, everyone needs to be working in harmony. And there is that whole kind of... Yeah idea of everyone having a part to play and if you pull out an individual little section then that might not look very exciting but it has its place um, in this whole sort of holistic view which used to be a very kind of soft soppy way of talking but I think people are getting much more the idea that it is a whole holistic interdependency. People who inspired me about what great facilities management can do um, you know I've, I've, you know, many of the people that have been interviewed in, 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 in this series you know showed those, those, those different um, aspects, you know, there, there, there were some people in this business with some terrific brains. Um, and, you know, back to the people who aren't inspired and aren't inspiring, you know, uh, it, 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 it's such a shame because sometimes you get these terrific brains and they don't stay in our sector because they don't find it as rewarding and, 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 and exciting as, 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 uh, as they should. Um, I think that's an issue on the client side particularly, isn't yeah. it? That because it's not seen really as one good, of the yeah. sexy areas that people are thinking, well, if I really want to go somewhere in this organisation, I need to get out of facilities and get into another division. Well, part of it, of course, is that um, you know, there's more M than F in FM. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of the competencies that really great facilities managers have, you know, awesome interpersonal skills, terrific communication skills, great project management, administration creativity, problem solving, blah, blah, are really valuable business skills. So if you start to show yourself as being really good at those things in, in a corporate, chances are they'll bump you upstairs, but probably into something that's not FM related. Yeah. Um, so we do lose a lot of talent in that way. Other than those who come over to the supply side, and, and, and I think, you know, I mean, which, which is what I did, 29 years working customer side, um, and one of the reasons I went supply side was I was, you know, personal career-wise, I was never going to get on the board of a telecoms company as a facilities manager. And I, yeah. I, I had ambitions to be in the board. 